Good evening, YouTube. Guess what? I got more kidney stones, which sucks. But it does have its perks. The main one being the perks. They ease the pain, and they cure me of my general misanthropic attitude, which is no small feat this day and age. But most importantly, they give me ideas to ponder. Here's one. How come no major cordless tool manufacturer out there makes a compact, portable, battery-powered, automotive smoke tester thing? I made this when I was a kid. It's the cheapest Harbor Freight toolbox they sold, and a modified Harbor Freight paint sprayer can. It's got a beefy 12-volt switching power supply from everyone's favorite communist dictatorship, a propane grill regulator, and an air fitting. It's paid for itself in diagnostic time a thousand times over since I was in high school, finding all the vacuum lines I forgot to reconnect and showing me exhaust leaks I didn't know I had. Whole thing was like 30 bucks, though. That was back when brass fittings were at $9 a piece and also before Harbor Freight got all cute. Easily the most competent thing I've ever personally created. You can do it, Bubby! <gasps> I used literal erector set to suspend the heater in the oil bath. I'm happy to report my workmanship hasn't improved much. I'd like to make a version 2.0, but everything is so expensive now. Except my Patreon. Only $2 for early releases plus all the videos I make that aren't fit for public consumption. Check it out. Despite projects getting more expensive, there's still fun to be had. For less than you could buy one of these pre-made from China, let's make a version 2.0. It'll be a Milwaukee M12 powered, super compact, super portable, self-contained, and for no good reason whatsoever, waterproof smoke tester that requires no air compressor, no extension cords, and very little scratch. Did I mention it's cheap? In the interest of full disclosure, I had most of this crap lying around already. For my housing, I'm using this 30 cal ammo can I got for $5 from the powder-fueled boomstick show that shall not be named out of fear and dread of the almighty algorithm. You could fit everything into an even smaller enclosure than this, but it's nice to have the extra space to store some extra baby oil as well as some room to store your coiled up hose when you're done with it. My heat source is Nichrome Wire, 20 gauge. I have no idea where I got it from, but I suspect I bought it from a magical place from long, long ago. You kids will never know. Radio Shack. However, you can pull this out of hair dryers, toasters, anything electric that gets hot that your wife won't notice missing. As an air source, I considered scavenging the compressor from this dead jump box slash tire inflator but compressors are capable of building a lot of pressure, and therefore I would need to spend another 10 bucks on a one PSI propane grill regulator like this in order to protect the sensitive components in a modern EVAP system. And yes, 1999 is still modern, regardless of what any alpaca-headed Sigma boy tells you. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. I also have this old air pump from a Harbor Freight air horn kit. I bought it to protect my minivan from Nissan Altima drivers in Philly, but instead of cramming a train horn under the crowded hood of a Chrysler Pacifica, I decided it would be easier just to get my license to carry. Instead of reusing that air horn pump or buying a $10 regulator, I chose to be frugal, and I bought this adorable $9 12-volt vacuum pump motor on Amazon. This is a rubber diaphragm pump, and I'm going to use the outlet port here on the top as my air supply. Because it doesn't use pistons, you can't deadhead it and it's not capable of generating enough pressure to blow this jar and shoot glass into your face like Howard Stern's dad. As a power source, old trusty here. My design should draw roughly six amps, exactly. So with one of these formerly cheap three amp hour batteries from the tool brand of your choosing, you can get a solid half hour of diagnostic time. If you can't find the leak in a half hour, either you're blind or there's no leak. 
To tap into that battery, I splurged on one of these cheap 3D printed M12 battery adapters you can buy on Amazon or eBay. You can even 3D print them yourself, but there's diminishing returns on your time. And this one comes with a handy fuse holder and a built-in switch. And for some reason, drywall anchors and Wagos. We're not building a house, so I'm probably gonna use bolts and solder. The L is silent. First, let's build the smoke generator. Coil a length of nichrome wire to suit your design specifications. The shorter the length of wire, the lower the resistance. The more current will flow through it, and the hotter it'll get. A longer length will resist more, and draw less current, and run a little bit cooler. I want to make a 2 ohm coil, which at 12 volts is going to make a reasonable 72 watt heating element. The nice thing about nichrome wire is the resistance increases with temperature, so the hotter it gets, the more it resists, and it's basically self-regulating. Ow! You can't just submerge the heater into the oil bath or it'll just smolder. You need a wick to absorb the oil and then heat that. Tiki torches. They're good for more than just simple summer ambiance and political unrest. I'm all out of erector set, so I'm going to use 14 gauge Romex to feed my heater. It conducts better than steel. And it's rigid enough to hold the heater in a fixed position. Copper crimp sleeves would be the right way to connect this. I don't have any. I don't trust plastic Wagos in a vat of bubbling oil, and soldering to nichrome wire is so stupid, only management would dare try it. Just gonna twist and bend the nichrome wire around the Romex and then crimp the whole thing in Pop Op's vise. Well, that didn't work for crap. Copper work hardens pretty fast. I have these spade connectors. I'm just going to crimp it using them and then just snip the excess material off. No one will ever know. Obviously, we need to get power, air, and smoke through this lid. My answer? Cheap nylon bulkhead fittings. All you gotta do is drill a hole in the lid, insert the fitting, put the supplied washers on either side, and then tighten the nut. According to my measurements, quarter-inch fittings should pass two 14-gauge conductors perfectly. Uh, maybe a little lube. I only like perfect equilateral triangles. All other triangles are mathematically and aesthetically inferior.
a thin film of RTV under the washers to make sure it seals tight. And if you've noticed that the lid changed from gold to silver, that's because drilling super thin metal is a lot harder than it looks. Sometimes you gotta lick it before you can stick it. Put some extra tubing on the inlet so it blows onto the wick. You don't want it to touch the wick for obvious reasons. Yeah, see, that's a little close. You gotta keep them separated. Perfect. Time to test the concept. A little goes a long way. Give it a couple seconds, and she's cooking. If you're worried about excess pressure buildup in a glass jar, don't worry, there's a built-in safety feature. The jar is gonna be inside a metal box. When Milwaukee inevitably steals this design from me, they can design a better way to fasten the pump down. Me? I'm just using a hose clamp. I was going to wrap the jar in duct tape until it fit in nice and tight with an interference fit, but I found this rubber sheet lying around, so... the noble words of dads everywhere, that ain't going nowhere. You might be skeptical that this cheap little pump is up to the task, but remember, all you gotta do to make this work is create a one PSI positive pressure differential between the inside of the jar and the ambient pressure outside. So it takes about 20 seconds to start making reasonable smoke. If that's not fast enough for you, stay tuned for the 50 caliber M18 version. Don't tempt me. That's plenty of flow. <laughs> See, this is why we need engineers. My math said the heater and the pump combined were going to draw about six and a half amps at most. I am technically an engineer. That's only from eight to five. After that, I'm a total hack. But hey, it works. I'm going to mount the battery here on the lid, despite the superior center of gravity that would be achieved by mounting it down in here. Because you need to be able to get your meat sticks on the squeeze tabs to get the damn thing out again. Growing up with video games means I lack the attention span to measure anything out, so I'm just gonna mock it up and probably get it wrong anyway. Nope. Had to slide the pump all the way down to the bottom and tuck it in the corner and then also zip tie the inlet tube back. Then it will fit like glove. This chuck does not grip like it used to. Not sure what happened to it.
square enough? The wiring that came with the battery adapter is plenty long. Until... Time to implement the ancient American philosophy of more is more. Do I like the sloppy excess wire shoved in there? No. But I like it better than ripping my wires out every time I close the lid. Air hose, vacuum hose, windshield washer fluid hose, it doesn't really matter. The best hose for this project is the hose you've already got lying in the scrap pile somewhere. Uh-oh. Looks like my leak detector has found its first vacuum leak. It's self-reporting. It's leaking past my power feed through. Only one fix for that. A glob of RTV. The old girl's been running lean ever since I had the blower off for a service last, so... I disconnect the brake booster line, and... You could buy an assortment of nipples to keep in the box, but the pressure is so low, I just shove it in raw. All right, keep an eye out. Hold on. Ah, I know where it is. I always forget that one. Trixie little hobbitses. Job well done. When you're done, just coil up the hose, the wires, and close it up. It's a tool that you can fit on any shelf or leave out in the rain, but most certainly cannot take through airport security. I have a lot of those tools. There. Visually similar, but legally distinct branding. And if that's not enough, I actually got a project done in time for dinner with the wife and kids for once. Well, I was wrong. I got in trouble. Thanks for watching. Stay thrifty. My boy was just like me